Hey, on the Towners, I'm Frank Licari, and today our adventure takes us by land and by sea to an area of Palm Beach County known as the Gateway to the Caribbean. I'm talking about the city of Riviera Beach and Singer Island. We'll go underwater to a spot that attracts divers from all over the world. We'll experience gallons of fun on pulse-pounding rides. And we'll find our inner sensei at this local dojo. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, I'm Frank Licari. Join me as we go on the town in the Palm Beaches. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.tv for more information. When I see you walking on the beach, I feel like a child. If I dare, but I'm scared, I'm way too shy. Hey, on the towners, did you know that Bahamians were among the earliest inhabitants of what is now known as the city of Riviera Beach? What brought them here, you ask? Well, back then, this city had a rich commercial fishing industry. Let's dive a little deeper into the history of this city by the sea. First people that we know of to have lived in what is now Riviera Beach were actually the Native Americans from this area. By the time European Americans and African Americans were coming here, they had areas that had been built up, the, the, the soil had been built up through mounds. Kaiser was a judge. He actually worked up at the courthouse for what was then Dade County, it was, which was in Juneau. He married another local girl. Her name was Maddie Spencer, and they built a home that they kept adding rooms to. Eventually, they had a three-story, 20-room hotel that they called Oaklawn. Judge Heiser had to move to Miami because the county seat moved from Juneau back to Miami, and he had to be available for court every day as our only and first county judge, and ended up selling the hotel to a series of proprietors who didn't do a very good job. They had competition by then by the Flagler Hotels. Oaklawn had been changed to Riviera in 1893 after a guest at the hotel sitting on the porch looked out over the Lake Worth and said, this is the Riviera of America. It was about 1910, people from the Bahamas had been coming over and squatting on what was what is now known as Singer Island. The men were fishermen, they followed the fish, but eventually Pera Singer wanted to develop that land. Singer Island as we know of it today was attached to the island of Palm Beach before 1918 when they cut the inlet. By the 20s, that's when Riviera became Riviera Beach. In the 1930s, a group of Palm Beach women had discovered that the conch ladies had been collecting shells and creating beautiful arrangements. It gave the women something to do, especially when their husbands were still following the fish. The city had a very rich fishing industry and it was attracting people from all over the place, including um, the Caribbean, right. um, including, you know, former slaves who had come down here and were with A lot um, of Bahamians, right? A lot of Bahamians. Back in 2012, Mayor Thomas Masters started learning about the city's history, started meeting so many Bahamian people who live here. So he decided uh, in 2012 that he wanted to kind of create, you know, a formal relationship sure. with Grand Bahama. So we ended up in that year signing a sister city agreement between Riviera Beach and Freeport. Wow. Over here is Riviera Beach, over here is Freeport, but in between was a hugely important connection right. that, that was historical, that's cultural, um, and that makes sense in terms of, you know, our working together. So you're going to love this story. Uh, back in the late 1400s, uh, Columbus was sailing the Caribbean, and he saw what he thought were three mermaids. And he was quoted as saying, they're not half as beautiful as they are painted. <laughs> but get this, what he was really seeing was not mermaids, they were manatees. But what he didn't know was that that was going to be the first written record of manatee sightings in North America. Huh? So I actually know that because I'm a manatee master that works at Manatee Lagoon. Oh. But I can take you inside to talk to Brittany to learn more about it. 
Yeah, great, sure. Okay. Sounds good. Manatee Lagoon is an eco-discovery center. We're located in Riviera Beach, Florida, along the beautiful Lake Worth Lagoon waterfront. So we have really awesome uh, waterfront views here Thank at our you. facility. We have a lot of fun things for families to come out and do. We have an interactive exhibit space that has a lot of different interactive touch screens that kids can learn different things about manatees. And then we also have a lot of free programs for families to enjoy. So we have everything from adult yoga along the waterfront, uh, to Wait, what does adult yoga have to do adult with manatees? Adult yoga, wellness, is it all mindfulness. Wellness. Do, yes. they, do they learn the manatee? Is that they don't? You like that? <laughs> you ever do that? But it's very relaxing. Right? Yeah. This was developed for a purpose in the beginning. So tell me a little bit about. Do we have the history of the manatee? You got that in your in your lexicon of knowledge? Yeah. So Manatee Lagoon is owned and operated by Florida Power and Light. Okay. And what we love to tell people here when people come visit our center is kind of the really unique relationship that manatees have with power plants. With energy. And yes, electrical exactly. energy. Yeah. We have a power plant next door. It's FPL's uh, Next Generation Clean Energy Center, and that's what expels the warm water into the outflow area, and that's what keeps manatees coming back to our facility year after year during the winter months. Wow. Before this building was here, um, it was just an empty parking lot, and people would, would come and see the manatees. Just hang out, park the car and look exactly, at manatees. Exactly, exactly. And when FPL decided to rebuild the power plant next door um, and modernize it, they decided to build this educational facility to not only allow for a safe viewing place for people to come, um, but also provide that educational aspect sure. and kind of teach people Great. more about how to protect them. If you're still craving cute creatures, then head over to Sailfish Marina and cruise along the shore with the Palm Beach Dolphin Tours. There you can get up close and personal with wild dolphins, sea turtles, and other marine life. Chandler, you are the uh, Park Services Specialist. What does it entail? I oversee some of our um, specialty programs. Okay. So I oversee our volunteer program, our interpretive programs. That's how we present information about the park to the public. Gotcha. And that also includes overseeing uh, our animal care program. What animals are we caring well, for? Well, we have a nature center here at MacArthur Beach okay. with six large saltwater aquariums to show the public some of the critters that live in our park that you maybe yeah. wouldn't get to see because they live underwater. One of the critters that we are well known for is sea turtles. Oh, nice. So MacArthur Beach State Park is one of the largest density nesting grounds for endangered sea turtles in the state of Florida. We have a permit to keep turtle ambassadors. These are young loggerhead sea turtles. They get to be an ambassador? They get to be wow. ambassadors <laughs> and help us educate the public about sea turtles and conservation programs. One of our turtle ambassadors that I helped raise for about two years, got released to the ocean the other day. So you're a mom? Yeah, so what? we don't keep them forever. We, we let them get big and strong and then have to send them on their way so they can go be productive sea turtles and help populate their species. Can I kayak? Can I do anything here? We've yeah. got uh, kayak rentals available through our gift shop. Our nature center is open from nine to five every day. We also have guided nature walks with our volunteers or staff every single morning at 10 a.m. And programs going on all throughout the year Quick interview, if you don't mind. I uh, just wanted to let you know I really love what you've done with the place and uh, had a great time here today. So, how often do you get out here? Just a couple words, just uh, just for the camera, just for the audience. I'd love to talk to you about uh, just a little bit about how you uh, enjoy the uh, the outdoors and anything. But well, we can always get a quote from him later, I guess. All right. All right, you have a good one. So, only four weeks ago, I'm on the beach, right? In Singer Island, beautiful beach. And I'm thinking to myself, if only there was a place that I could get pizza and beer, here you are. For us, beer is the liquid version of pizza. And pizza it is. is the food version That's a good of point, beer. yep. So, beer, pizza, and the beach. And you're in charge of the beer. Yes, yeah. I am. Now, how, do you, how does one so young uh, become such an expert on beer? Did you do a lot of drinking in college? Is that how? <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. Lots of drinking, lots of practice, lots of studying. You study like a, you do for wines? Exactly. How many uh, uh, beers would you say you have on the uh, on tap there? We have 72. 72 beers? Yes. Local? All over the place? We have a lot of local. You know, we like to support the, the local craft breweries, but we also have beers from all over the world. How many different pizzas you got? We have nine different specialty pizzas, where you, and you can also build your own. Now, not just beer and pizza, though. You come in here, and it's a beautiful location. Really, like, swank. 
right? You Thank got you. a little bit of wood and steel. It's very earthy. Yeah, yeah we have trivia at night, and right. we have karaoke night. Live bands Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. Really proud of the environment that we offer. Yeah. Uh, it's a very family friendly. We want families to feel that if you want to come to a place where you can enjoy a nice beer and also bring your kids over and right. just have them play around, yeah. they can they play, can feel around and yeah. play bocce ball. Right. I can go right to the beach, come back here for a little lunch, go back to the beach. Maybe I'm a surfer. And not in that particular order. No, it doesn't have to be, but you know, that's the way I yeah. would do it. Okay, so you're an amateur champ, right? You're out there and you go, all right, uh, it's going well. Uh, do you turn pro at some point? Okay. I turned pro act actually in 2015 as right, well. Right, when you open up the space, it's right. a smart move. I gathered between 60 to 70 amateur bouts. And so from then it was just enough time for me to take it to the next level. Do you see any like students come in who are like starting for the first time and all of a sudden they get the bug? Are they going out to do their own kind of career at it or are you just kind of just more for like recreational? Uh, no, both, both. I like when they come in from the ground floor and sure. they can kind of decide where they want to go with it. Self-defense, uh, amateur or professional fighting or just overall general health. Question I have for you is that are you in a good mood? Yeah, you see the smile. I'm feeling good. great, okay. great about so this So it's been today. a good day so far? It's been a good no day. No pent up. No pants up. I already got that out on the Got bottom. it out already. Great. Okay, because you're going to teach me things, and I yes. want to make sure that everything is copacetic. All right, let's do this. Let's do let's this. Let's do it. Okay. Let's all do right, it. all right. Do we right. start like this? No, we don't, we no, don't shake our opponent's start, hands. No, we're going to start in yeah, the ring. Yeah, we push each other. Yeah, we're gonna, like, okay, oh, okay, wow, okay. wow, wow, wow. Right. <laughs> Obviously, when you're talking about kickboxing, there's like two kind of skills, right? It's not just the hands, it's, right. there's a lot involved. There's, so there's just, more dimensions You typically to it. start with the legs or you start with the hands? Depending on what you got in front of you. Right. Uh, so you can either start with punching and ending with a kick or you can start with kick and gotcha. ending with punches. Gotcha. And uh, you, when do you train? When there's no there's no teaching going on, that's when I'm doing my thing. And you're training in this gym? I train in this gym. So in the same place you sweat, you bring the kids in and the adults in and they I'm sweat where all. you we're sweat. Do, yeah, we're a family in right. here. Right. Oh, yep, good. The Riviera Beach Marina Village is your key to fun on and by the water. Locals and tourists alike enjoy strolling along the marina's waterfront walkway, and there are a ton of vendors to connect you to just about every water-related sport, paddleboarding, kayaking, diving, boat rides, and more. You can even jump on a water taxi and head over to Peanut Island. So right now it's a cruiser. Right now we got to run the same, you see everyone else, they're yep. just cruising because yep. of the manatees. Yep. We run three shuttle boats. We try to run every, weekdays we run every 20 minutes, weekends every 10 minutes. We run from Riviera Beach Marina, a real nice brand new marina they built there. You bring families, you bring groups. It's, it's very family orientated. Uh, there's no alcohol allowed on Peanut Island, so it's very friendly. You can come over here, you can barbecue food, you can bring whatever you want. And it's a real nice getaway. You feel like in 10 minutes, you feel like you're in the Bahamas. Right. It's yeah, very it really quiet, does very feel peaceful. Like I would never... And the water is some of the clearest water you'll see in Florida. Absolutely. And behind us, there's uh, some history as well. And back in 1928, a peanut oil finery wanted to put peanut oil, store it here on the island. So when the ships came in, they could unload it. Right. Back then, the unnamed hurricane in, in 28 knocked all the facilities down before they opened. But then all the locals started calling it Peanut Island. Gotcha. So that's where the name started. Also behind here, little known bunker. Tell me about that. JFK was a president. If he was away from the White House for more than three weeks, they had to have a safe house to put him. So they built bunkers. They built one here and one in Nantucket. The one here was built because his home was literally uh, two miles from here. Right. They could drive across Palm Beach, get into a boat, come here within 10 minutes from door to door, Right. which he came over and tested a few times. And presumably nobody knew that it was here. Top, yes, yeah, top secret at top the time. Top secret. Correct. While JFK's bunker has been closed to the public since October 2017, the Port of Palm Beach is working with the city of Riviera Beach to repair, rebuild, and reopen it in the near future. 
Port of Palm Beach is more than 100 years old. In fact, we celebrated our 100 year anniversary in 2015. In the 1950s, it was the largest trading partner with Cuba in the world. Today, we are a tenant port and we are predominantly an export port. In fact, we're one of the only 16 ports in the country that are an export port. More than 50% of all the products that are consumed in the Caribbean are coming out of our port. And that's everything from food to supplies. We're sort of a hidden gem because I think people don't realize the, all the impacts we actually have on people's day-to-day -day lives. When you start thinking about the fact that most of the sugar we consume in the asphalt, and if you ever go to the, uh, to the Bahamas or Dominican Republic and have chicken and fries, that's probably coming out of our port too, uh, from, from Canada. The port that we sail out of is Port of West Palm Beach. And in fact, we are the only cruise line that is sailing out from here. What's a typical experience for me? Uh, I get on the boat at a certain time. Are there any ship activities that we do? And Ab then absolutely. Yeah. There's a sail away party right here at the open deck. A welcome yeah. party while the ship pulls out and starts to set sail to right. Grand Bahamas. Once that is over, they all sort of uh, go to a different restaurant that we have. In the Encore Lounge, we've got about eight to nine bars on board. Oh, sure. And That's where Encore things get Lounge. crazy and loose, right? Yeah, absolutely. You find your way there? Exactly. And then there's a whole bunch of shore excursion activities that you can go to. But also there are people who sort of take the trip from West Palm Beach, go to Grand Bahamas right. Island. Right. Once they're there, they stay for a couple of nights in, in the right. island. Or they can take the trip back either with us or our sister ship, which is the um, Grand Celebration. Right, because you have two, you have the yes. Grand Classica and the Grand yes. Celebration. Yes, daily there is a ship leaving. Got you, so you always because, have one, yeah, yeah, one they're crossing each other. Yes. Do you honk at each other on the way like two guys? Uh, are, it's too far away uh, to honk. Oh, I leave yeah, that to the captain that normally. Okay, okay. <laughs> When the city decided to remodel the whole marina, I decided you know, to be part of it. And we decided to make uh, the menu a really nice menu. I hired a chef. A chef, you went the right way. You yeah. got a guy in the kitchen who's developed a, a, an eclectic menu. What's the food like here? We have lots of Caribbean style food. We have American food. We have really, we cater for everybody. Right now I'm going to do a strawberry mojito a passion. strawberry mojito. Passion. The passion, oh, passion. 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 With passion. With passion. So everything I do here is with passion. Right. So when you put them in, people yeah. like to do like oh, this. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. smell? Oh, I do, I do smell. I smell, smell now. Oh, wow, That's yeah. That's perfume. That's the passion. So you do a little bit of ice. It's going to be a lot of mess. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Tea we have. Yeah. All See? Right. Yeah. More ice sure. Tea. And this. some rum. Some rum. Where's the rum? Oh, look at that. Oh, a little sidearm. That's, the, that's a little tricky. Look at that. Wow, look at that sugar in there. It is. Wow. You oh. saw? Whoa. That's the passion. You that's see the glass the passion? there? Can you do me? Look at this. Yeah. That's the passion. And so people actually drink this without getting hurt and injured? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. I always tell, idea? don't swallow the ice. You've got a great location, you're serving great food, and it's successful, right? It's very practicing. successful. The best view That's here. That's what I'm saying. Right. You don't get this view anywhere else. Well, what's your hours of operation here? So 10 to 10. 10 to 10. Sometimes we stay later because sometimes we do like Latino nights. Oh, yeah. That's and Latino be fun. like to stay late. You like so to, we you stay like till to, 12. You yeah. like to do a little dancing? Yeah, a little bit. Ah, oh, here we go. Treats, smoothies, goodies. Ah, jerk. They knew I was coming. Is the theme kind of Caribbean? Is it yeah. Bahamian? Is that yeah. what it is? It's Caribbean, Bahamian, yeah. it's islandy. Okay, yeah. islandy. So all right. encompassy. Right. Right? Right. You're on an islandy, right. you're, you're giving right. them more islandy stuff. Right. And music is that vibe too. Oh, you got the music Live going? Live music going. Mm -hmm. It's meant to take you to another place, to go in the afternoon and have some conch fritters, some great smoothies, maybe shop for a little islandy clothing, that sort of thing. How about how many people do you get at this? Uh, little uh, fun thing every Sunday? Hundreds. Hundreds? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And is it the locals mostly? Do you get any tourists to come in? How does it work? Some people come off the big ship and will come by. Yeah, yeah. Tourists going to Peanut Island, stop by, get a snow cone, barbecue right. chicken, something. Yeah. Is it, what about rain or shine? And what if it rains, what do you do? Well, it's uh, it's rain or shine. We might have less vendors if sure. it's too wet, yeah. but uh, no, we're here. We're, we're always here. All the here. Time. Now, the Tiki Market isn't just a little bit of the Bahamas in your own backyard. It also offers tons of cool stuff from local creatives, like uh, gourmet goodies, uh, stunning sculptures, and wearable art. If I can ever get out of this chair, we'll interview a local vendor who's uh, got a little bit of a flair for the international custom style. There we go. All right. Ah, that was easy. Well, the first piece that 
I recreate was from West Africa. It was from Abidjan, the Ivory Coast. And from then, it seemed like everything African, everything particularly West African, Maasai, Zulu, I was drawn to. The Tiki Market is a gym in Riviera Beach. Here, we all come together every Sunday. We have different items that we sell. It's a community. Folks from Riviera Beach can come and get fresh produce, custom designed clothing and jewelry, art, and feel a sense of pride in their hometown. You might be surprised to know that right underneath the Blue Heron Bridge, there's a great dive spot called Phil Foster Park. In fact, it was voted one of the top 10 dive spots in the world by Sport Diver Magazine. Easy access, abundant marine life is what keeps the divers coming year after year. Let's dive in for a closer look. My husband and I started in 2002. We've yep. been diving in the area for a long time as instructors and decided why not live the dream right. and just do it full time. A lot of people have great pastimes, right, that they like to do, but not everybody says let's start a business, right? And you chose this area for why? Because of the diving. Because of the diving, because this spot is the spot. It is the spot. The right. Gulf Stream comes closest to Florida right here, so it brings all the blue, beautiful water with it. All the creatures, all the critters come really close oh, to Florida. Yeah. At this particular spot, though, this is like macro capital. So it's all the little weird, funky creatures. Ooh. You get octopus, you That's get seahorses. That's what sea I was known horses, as in college. The weird, funky the weird, creature. creature You're yeah. going to fit right yeah, in, then. Yeah, yeah. Now, you are also uh, very involved in uh, the bridge here. Tell me about this no-take zone. It's a group of local divers that have been working for years to try to make sure that this area stays as protected as possible from collection because it is such a unique area. What is collection? People that want to come in and collect for a tropical uh, fish tanks, right. aquaria, just, like, just yeah. for fun. Just for fun, so mm -hmm. they can put it in their tank at home. You go, no, no. Correct. Right. This we is like for to leave us. them here. Let them, let them stay where they live. Correct. Right. Looking for a great place to take the family? The municipal beach at Singer Island has got you covered. From its ocean mall with shops and restaurants for all ages, to its covered playground and picnic pavilions, you'll find lots to do. Or you can do nothing at all. There's even a spot with a funky name that serves as an ode to local folklore. It's a tale that involves moonshine and a couple of goats. How does it feel to be the most popular guy on Singer Island? I've been on this island for a long time, and it's a, it's a great place for locals to come, which they do. Yeah, they do. I mean, we have a clientele here of people that come three, four, five times a week. Wow. Either some for breakfast, some are happy hour guests. We do Great Eggs Benedict. We do a skillet in a 17-inch cast iron pan with the home fries and the egg on okay. it, the cheese, Talking peppers. Language, and the, yeah. Yeah. We have music every day except for Monday and Wednesday. We're on the main entrance to the beach. The city, the state, they came in. They spent four and a half million dollars renovating this beach. Yep. They put these nice sail shades in. They got a playground down there for the kids, put in new tennis courts. I mean, it's one of the nicest beaches on the eastern seaboard. Right, and so you, it's a unique because, you know, typically you come to these and it's like, you you, you know, it's like nightlife type of stuff. Right. But you can bring the family here sure, too. Sure, absolutely. We're pet friendly, family friendly. I am soaking wet, right? Yeah, I just got are. finished, uh, 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 what, what was I doing? Flow Rider. Flow Rider, uh, which was not easy. And then you put me on some, what was that thing Big that I just Thunder. Did? That was amazing. Which is one of our most popular rides. It should be. What's enticing me to come to the Rapids Water Park? What's your big draw? Over 30 acres with 42 slides and rides. 30 acres. Over 30 acres. We are the largest water park in South Florida until you get to the Orlando area. Until you get to those, those guys. Those guys. Yeah, yeah. How has it evolved over the years? It opened in 1979 with just the four flumes, Old Yeller. So people would pay by the hour to ride the mat down those flumes. So it was in 1992 that we started with our first expansion and wow. we have continued to grow and grow and grow ever since. I noticed there's a couple of, uh, there's a lot of art around the park. What, what, tell me we about did. the did. We unveiled yep. art this year. It's a new thing that we did in regards to arts and schools. So our goal is to fill all the panels, have a new panel each year and, and 
have all of them full of artwork. Chase that feeling around. Bring on the new tomorrow. Bring on the new tomorrow. Mayor Ronnie, you get to be the mayor of a very, very fun and vibrant town. What's a day in the life of Mayor Ronnie? Like. It's summer all year round. Right. We have the best weather you can never imagine. We're the only beach that you can get off the interstate and come straight to the beach. We have wonderful restaurants here, man, and we're a city that's on the move. We're trying to redevelop and develop uh, more businesses to come here. River Beach is a gold mine. Right. We're diamond in the rough. Man, I, I think we'll be a top 10 destination in the next 10 years. Whoa. And you've got a, an interesting mix here, right? Because you're an island town, you're a beach town, you've got a, a combination of great resorts, shopping, people come here for the diving. Yes, diving, right? hey, one of the best offshore diving in the world. Right. The amazing thing is once you come and visit, you don't want to leave. Whether it's boarding a shuttle boat to an historic island, exploring underwater creatures in a diver's paradise, or taking a stroll through an environmental treasure, Riviera Beach and Singer Island have got you covered. They're one of South Florida's quintessential beach destinations, and no matter what your pleasure, whether by land or by sea, restaurants, water sports, and more await you. We hope you enjoy discovering Riviera Beach and Singer Island, and that you'll join us the next time we go on the town in the Palm Beaches. If I was in the water, I would be swimming on a manatee's back right now, but I'm not. This isn't real. This is a sculpture. This program was brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.tv for more information.